Haiti, the country where my father and most of my family was born and raised. I'm a first generation American, and my father did his best to make sure I knew the rich history of the tiny island nation. Haiti is a small country in the Caribbean, sharing the island of Hispaniola with the Dominican Republic. Many people know Haiti is just a small poor country, but that's only what's shown on the news. Many times when Haiti is shown, all you see are impoverished people, dirt roads, and a country yearning for economical change. Though there are some parts of Haiti that are like that, the vast majority is not. And that is not the Haiti that I know. There are many beautiful places in Haiti, like the National Palace, where the President lives, the National Cathedral, and multiple Chateau Francais, or French castles. Over the years, I have visited numerous times, and I have fallen in love with the people, the music, the culture, the weather, and the food. Two years ago, on January 12, 2010, when the tiny country was stricken with a 7.0 magnitude earthquake, this all changed. And we soon found out through the news that the epicenter of the earthquake was in Laogon, where most of my family lived. It was a sad sleepless night in my house, and we had no contact with any of our family on the island. We quietly watched CNN, waiting for any shred of information. And we began to lose hope when we saw pictures showing the strongest buildings on the island that had been destroyed. The National Palace was almost completely leveled, and the National Cathedral was almost see-through. Luckily, most of my immediate family are citizens of the United States and were able to return to their homes in Connecticut about a week after the quake. A month after, though, there were still many family members who we had not heard from, and to this day, we still have not. The happenings of this earthquake made my family members think. What could be done to prevent mass destruction, as on January 12th, as well as what could be done to help the people who are not as fortunate as us to immediately begin the rebuilding process. My family began projects that tackle both of those issues. Looking back at Haiti two years after the quake, many people are still living in tent cities, sadly, but the country's diplomats are making great strides to relocate these people to homes. My aunt and uncle have even started a company building earthquake resistant, equal, eco-friendly homes that are much sturdier than the makeshift homes that were in many areas before the earthquake. They have also built an earthquake resistant and eco-friendly hotel. And we have not stopped there. We have been donating school supplies, money, water, and clothing to schools and families throughout the country. From Laogan in the south to Port-au-Prince in the west and Cabaret north of the capital. We even have two schools that we are sponsored. Just a few months ago, we purchased a large piece of land in Laogon to build a large school for kindergarten through 12th grade. Over the years, I have met people who have lost everything, belongings, jobs, and even their entire family. Yet, these people are still joyful and praising God every day to be alive. Every time I return, I am continuously humbled. To see young children walking down river valleys and then traveling up a mountain just to learn is amazing to me. Their schools have no electricity, doors, windows, and some even lack stable roofs. Yet, you will meet some of the brightest and eager to learn children in each and every classroom. Coming back to the United States and sitting in an air-conditioned, brightly lit, state-of-the-art classroom just means so much more. Thinking back to the children walking up the mountainside makes the walk to Stetson seem just not so bad. I cannot wait to return to Haiti this summer to do whatever I can to help.